What's up, guys? Um, I'm here to give you my... Now that's going to be called WWE 13 Attitude Era Mode Let's Play. Part 14. This is part 14. I'm almost done with this. I'm going to show you the stuff I've unlocked. I'm going to have to go into the unlockables because I've been on this lately. So, yeah. Um, but I thought this is actually going to be pretty cool. Um, now I'm doing the unscripted part of it. Um, we'll see where it goes. Um, I've done some of this with Adam from CM Brothers. So it's going to be a little tough because... You know what? Because it took him 10 twice. And it's going to take me probably a bunch. Because I might put it on the gym I might not. If it's time, I won't. So now I'm going to show you the guys I've unlocked. Well, the stuff. Not just the guys, the stuff. There we go. Now you guys get the full thing. Alright. So first, I unlocked Booker T. I have unlocked the WWE Tag Team Championships from 2002 through 2010. I've unlocked the World Tag Team Championships from 2002 through 2010. I've unlocked Mankind and Brown Attire. I've unlocked Hunter Hardis Helmsley. I've unlocked bonus match number one. This match happened on September 22nd, 1997. I've unlocked One Night Only, 1997 Arena. I've unlocked Cactus Jack. I've unlocked the European Championship. I've unlocked Kane, 1997 through 1999. I've unlocked Bad Blood, 1997 Arena. I've unlocked the British Bulldog. I've unlocked Brett the Hitman Hulk. I've unlocked Vincent Kennedy McMahon in a suit. I've unlocked Survivor Series, 1997 Arena. I've unlocked Bonus Match Number 2. This match happened on November 9th, 1997. Why are you yelling? No, no. Stop. I've unlocked Kane, 1997-1999, debut lighting. I've unlocked Bonus Match Number 3. This match happened on January 12th, 1998. I've unlocked the Animal. I've unlocked Hawk. I've unlocked Billy Gunn. I've unlocked Royal Rumble 1998 Arena. I've unlocked Road Dog. I've unlocked Bonus Match Number 15. This match happened on March 29th, 1998. I've unlocked Bonus Match Number 4. This match happened on August 26th, 1998. I've unlocked WrestleMania 14 Arena. I've unlocked the WWE Championship from 1998 through 1998. I've unlocked Undertaker 1997 through 1998. I've unlocked Unforgiven 1998 Arena. I've unlocked Dude Love. I've unlocked Over the Edge 1998. I've unlocked Paul Bearer. I've unlocked Bonus Match Number 5. This match happened on June 28th, 1998. I've unlocked Ken Shamrock. I've unlocked King of the Ring, 1998 Arena. I've unlocked Kane, 1997 through 1999, two sleeves of tile. I've unlocked the Smoke and Stoke Championship version of the WWE Championship. I've unlocked Kane, 1997 through 1999, Undertaker this, and, and his Undertaker disguise. I've unlocked, I've unlocked bonus match number six. This match happened on August 30th, 1998. I've unlocked the World Tag Team Championships from 1985 to 1998. I've unlocked SummerSlam 1998 Arena. I've unlocked bonus match number 7. This match happened on September 27th, 1998. I've unlocked Breakdown 1998 Arena. I've unlocked Stone Cold Steve Austin in a 316 t-shirt. I've unlocked bonus match number 8. This match happened on October 18th, 1998. I've unlocked Judgment Day 1998 Arena. I've unlocked the Classical Intercontinental Championship, but that's not the Classical Intercontinental Championship. I've unlocked Raw, Raw 1998 Arena. I've unlocked Mark Henley 1998. I've unlocked Big Boss Man. I've unlocked Bonus Match Number Nine. This match happened on November 15, 1998. I've unlocked Survivor Series 1998 Arena. I've unlocked Bonus Match Number Ten. This match happened on November 23, 1998. I've unlocked the WWE Championship from 1998 to 2002. I've unlocked X-Pac. I've unlocked Rock Bottom 1998 Arena. I've unlocked Bonus Match Number 11. This match happened on December 21st, 1998. 
have unlocked the attitude area backstage. Um, where this is where you can fight backstage if you want. I've unlocked the Hardcore Championship. I've unlocked the Walk 1998 to 1999 World Out Attire. Um, I've unlocked Royal Rumble 1999 Arena. I've unlocked Halftime Heat Empty Arena. I've unlocked Bonus Match Number 12. This match happened on February 1st, 1998. I've unlocked Triple H in 1999. I've unlocked Vince McMahon. I've unlocked St. Valentine's Day Massacre 1998 Arena. I've unlocked the WWE Championship. This is the Brahma Bowl Championship that The Rock has. I've unlocked Paul White. I've unlocked bonus match number 13. This match happened on March 28, 1999. I've unlocked Shane McMahon. I've unlocked bonus match number 14. This match happened on August um, 3rd, 1997. I've unlocked WrestleMania 15 Arena. I've unlocked bonus match number 16. This match happened on August 30th, 1998. I've unlocked SummerSlam 1997 Arena. I've unlocked Universe Feuds Path 1. I think this is going to be like, um, where you get the video packages and stuff. I've unlocked the off-script storyline. And I've unlocked Kevin Nash. And I am about to go play the off-script storyline. But first, I'm going to show you, um, the, what's it called? Uh, oh, the achievements I got. So the achievements I got... I'm gonna start right here because it's the one I started. This is the one I did first. No, I didn't. And it's this one. Um, I, I've unlocked. This is one that's called a winner combination. If you don't know what that is, that's when you use a wake up taunt, land a fin and you land, then you land a finisher and immediately pin your opponent. That's exactly what I did. Then after that, I unlock a legend begins. That's when you at least win one match on hard difficulty or higher, which I won in that match on legend mode. Then I've unlocked comeback. I successfully performed a, a comeback move. Um, I've unlocked Watch Out, which, which is when you successfully reverse a finisher. I've unlocked Rise of DX scenario cleared. That means I cleared the Rise of DX chapter. I've unlocked, what, what, this one's called Austin 316 scenario, scenario clean, which means this means I cleared the Austin 316 chapter. Um, I've unlocked Fighting Smart. That means this is an exhibition. I untap, that means I attack the same body part 10 or more times in a singles match. This one means, I have a, this one means win hooligan. This means I broke a total of 20 tables, ladders, and chairs by attacking with them. Um, Brothers of Destruction clear. This means I cleared the Brothers of Destruction chapter. The Great One scenario clear. This means I cleared the Great One chapter. Um, Invincible Man. This means I won at least 20 matches on hard difficulty or higher. Which means I won on Legend Mode. Um, Mankind Scenario Clear. This means I cleared the Mankind Chapter. Oh my! This means I broke the announcer's table with a OMG move. Road to WrestleMania Clear. This means I cleared the Road to Wrestle WrestleMania 15 Chapter. Um, Arena Designer. I created an arena. Um, we create an arena mode while I was doing this. So that's all I have to do with that. So now I'm going to start um, off script. So let's see what the first one's going to be. Alright, so this first one is Kane versus Vader. Um, this one, ha this match happened, I'm going to say it now. Actually, no, actually, I can't say it now. Wait, do I? Well, I get to see what I get to do, right? Alright, so in this match, this match happened at Over the Edge, May 31st, 1998. This is Kane versus Vader. This happened in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Oh, please don't go to the match. I don't think it's going to go into it, per se. Um, so this, the history is Vader time. Before ever stepping foot in a WWE win, the man they call Vader earned a worldwide reputation as a bona fide tough man. At well over 400 pounds, he possessed the power of a super heavyweight, well as owning the unbelievable agility to fly through the air like a cruiserweight. During Vader's short WWE Path of Destruction from 1999 through 1990, no, from 1996 through 1999, 
he left many of WWE's biggest names in his wake. To pay tribute, here was a classic Vader mask versus mask match against Kane. The historical bonus objectives is I have to hit a diving clothesline from the top rope. I have to perform a choke slam and I have to perform a tombstone pile driver and pin him in 10 seconds. I think I can do that. Oh, it's actually has two, he actually has two sleeves this time. No, actually, no, he doesn't. Never mind. Just overpower Kane. Vader just overpower Kane. Oh, Vader just like that little top lock. Ah, ah. This is gonna work. I'm only gonna hit that wall wall when I hit fail. You ever seen Kane manhandled like this? Probably have actually now that I think about it. Oh! Here comes that diving clothesline you wanted. You got it. I know what to do now. Alright, I have to damage him a little bit. What? Why didn't the. Okay. That, that's cool. I'm gonna blame the game for that one. Disappear. I'd say this is almost even. Flex 
Jack to walk. Get the gas to walk. Oh, I'm gonna walk on your leg, Vader. Oh, I'm gonna stop on your arm, no, I'm not. Take too much time. I think my RB button is broken. Here comes my power, showing off my powerful moves. Oh, here it comes. Oh, Vader. Oh, no, Vader. We fade up Paul Kane again. Oh, I can't let him get me to the corner. Choking you, I'm choking you, baby. Here I come, Beta. At least it stops at nine. And we just do this. This is over. That was domination. It's not a much Vader. The 
let's see what's next. Ah, uh, my awards. I have now unlocked Beta and the WCW Heavyweight Championship from 1991 through 1993. It's pretty cool. So now I'm going to go to the timeline. Let's see what the next thing is. Actually, I want to go back to the time. Let me see if I can go back to the time. Actually, I won't go back to the timeline. Alright, so for this one, it happened on War is War on July 27th, 1998. This is Godfather Mark Henry vs. the World Wars, and this happened in Anaheim. Uh, I can't see what the state was, so I have to wait for that to come back on because I'm not good with my states. Uh, I think that's supposed to be California. But I'm not exactly sure. But the history is during this time while many superstars were controversial, no superstar ruffled more feathers than the Godfather. A noted pimp. <laughs> uh -huh, hopefully that's a good one. The, good fa the Godfather, not the good father, was always accompanied to the wind by a select group of scantily clad women. He affectionately referred to as Whole Train. In the ring, the normally fun-loving superstar was all business. As he transitioned away from the nation of domination, he went on to become one of the best. Um, one you no know, to become one of the most colorful and iconic champions of all time. Pimping ain't easy, so the historical bones of justice that have to perform the pimp drop. Prevent Hawk from ever tagging into the match. That might be tough. And have to win by pinfall with Godfather to be the end I think I might be able to do that. Oh, we can see Godfather come out with holes. He comes out with holes. Now this, now this guy knows how to live. Sort of. That's the yeah, animal. Comes out with clothes though. Get something to eat.
October 11th, 1998, in East Lot, I think that's supposed to be Lansing's, Missouri. The history. Um, I'll read the history to you later because I knew that was going to happen. 
The history is the highlight match which served as the introduction to a future WWE Hall of Famer and the departure of a legend. Throughout his awesome career, Edge made us laugh, cringe, and cry through his various antics and matches, all the way up to his retirement. The Rated R super, Superstar will always be known as one of the most talented, ruthless, and res resilient competitors WWE has ever known. His debut match on Sunday Night Heat would also be the last televised WWE match for Vader. The historical bonus objectives have to perform a will have to perform the downward spiral and pin him to in ten seconds and have to win a, have to win in four minutes or less. So I think I'm just gonna put it on easy mode but I'll let you guys watch the entrances. <laughs> Sorry guys, I've never played a deck before, so I didn't know that's what it means. Yes. I have a strong feeling that these guys will throw caution to the wind and just go full speed. Down in nose. He's taking out the trash. Oh man, what impact from that suplex. Oh my gosh. Oh no. Oh, it saved me! Oh, did you see the force behind that? Great real presence to avoid that. It's showing the bowling ball to reverse it. The fire hand is the new one. Whoa! Wow! Perfectly executed. Well, what's he going to do to follow that up? What a wonderful series of kicks! Oh, 
Wait, that was the move? So I've just unlocked Sunday Night Heat Alina and Edge from 1999. Pretty good. Are you ready? Wow. How, many, how long have I been on here? I've only been on here. I haven't even been on here an hour yet, and I've already completed stuff. All right. So this match. See this? Let's take a look at this match now. This match is going to be tough. So this is the Lock and Stone Cold Steve Austin versus Triple H and The Undertaker, and it happened on SmackDown. Let's see what's gonna happen. I think I'm probably gonna be the Lock and The Undertaker, probably. So uh, this match happened on April 29th, 1999. It happened at New. I don't know if that's. I think that's just Haven. I don't know what. What I don't know the state. I think that's supposed to say on. Um, I honestly don't know Connecticut. That's the only one I do. Um, the SmackDowns debuted in SmackDown debuted in 1999 as a one-time special, and it was a such a hit that it soon became a very weekly program. The Walk was quickly, the Walk was quick to claim that SmackDown was the Walk Show based on the fact. That it was the classic name for his catchphrase. Lay it the smackdown. On this first episode, that's what pilot means, I think. A historic announcement was made that Shane McMahon and The Undertaker joined forces to create the mega team of the corporation ministry. Well, yeah, actually, that was a all-star studded tag team match. Was the first time... The evil corporate ministry would enforce their will. So the historical bonus objectives is I have to perform the lock bottom on Triple H, perform the stun on the Undertaker, and I have to win by pinfall. Okay, that should be fine. It's kind of weird to see Triple H not doing his normal win entrance. It's kind of weird. Unless he does the yes, but he still does it.
Coach. Taking that big walk. Go to the guys, this is only going to take five more hours. I 
Austin and uh, the Wild don't necessarily like each other. Uh, Float over D and K. Stone Cold, and we'll start Stone Cold. The Rock is not letting oh, up the attack. Oh, that's my suplex. King of Triple H, up 1999. Come on, everyone, right hand fall. Right hand, right hand, right hand. Oh, Austin. 
I need to win the match, man. Alright, I'm gonna let you go tag on the table. I'll tag him also. It's actually easier than I thought it was gonna be. Oh, I'm not going to stay close. 
He likes how Triple H wouldn't carry into a big back line drop the other day. Somebody come on this table with me. Oh no! The only reason you caught me was because I was focused on everything I'm going to take out. Almost a power again. Oh, I'm bleeding. I think I'm bleeding. Oh, 
Hardy put the speed to the head for Hardy. Oh, you see that Hardy has a weapon now. He thought they were getting a little bad for knocking him out. Oh, jeez. That's some serious pain. I can see why. Oh, the Irish whip full of shot. And that's an artillery man. Back the ball to the ring. He 
Knocks it off the... Big back body drop, no gauge. It was a good match. That was a good match. Pretty good match. Let's see what I unlocked. Actually, what did I unlock? Let's see what I did unlock. Let's see what I did unlock. I've unlocked SmackDown 1999 Arena and John Cena 2004. It's pretty cool. Alright. Oh no, I don't know the Apocalypse one. No, not the, the Acolytes or whatever they're called. Uh, let's see what's going on here. So, 
This is the Apocalypse versus Kane and X-Pac happened on War is War. This match happened on March 31st, 1999 in Mall Illinois. I'll tell you the history in a second. Uh, Bradshaw and Farouk teamed together to form one of the most dominating tag teams in WWE history, the Acolytes. They were as tough as they came when they formed the APA. Drinking beer, smoking cigars, and raising hell on their way to winning the World Tag Team titles three times between 1999 and 2001. This highlighting match brings you back to their first Tag Team Championship win. As members of the corporate ministry, they challenged the current champions at the time, Kane and X-Pac, to a championship match on Raw. With a little help from Shane McMahon, they were able to secure the win. So here's what I have to do. I have to perform the clothesline from Hell and X-Pac, and I have to win by pinfall with Bradshaw pinning X-Pac. I think I can do that, because I have to hit there. So here we go. Triple H 99 went to uh, uh, 
fucked by the ministry or whatever the, the, corporate, the corporation or ministry. I don't even know what they're talking about. But also, um, we're having a roll dog in and, uh, and uh, somebody else. Uh, X Park, I know, probably stage face. Well, I'll say X Park. Yeah, that's the Oh, 
How are you doing this? Great, great presence, can't go with that. The Bulldog headlock. 
driving the opponent face first to the floor. A vicious elbow drop delivered with a lot of force. Oh, 
So for the, who, the people that I unlock were Bradshaw, Farouk, Bradshaw in APA attire, and Farouk in APA attire. So that's pretty good. Are you ready? Now we get to this one. This is the part where I turn Legend Mode easy. We're going to find out why in a second. We're going to find out. So it's at, on SmackDown, Chris Jericho versus Dog. We're gonna see why I put this on easy mode though. So, this happened on August 26, 1999, in Kansas City, Missouri. And I'll tell you the history in a second. Alright, so, I have to perform the Lion Table on Roll Dog. I have to perform a Power Bomb as a finisher and send. Roll dog through a normal table to get DQ'd in, let, in five minutes or less. That is why I put this on easy mode. You're going to see me doing this match a lot. Oh wait, actually I forgot to read the... So Jericho made his first impact on WWE with his Y2J... Mil 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 Millennium Countdown and his... Debut in a verbal sparing sensation with The Rock. His in-ring debut came on the inaugural SmackDown of episode. No, the inaugural episode of SmackDown, where he was disqualified for powerball and rolled up to a table. Whether be beloved or hated by WWE fans, Jericho has never been at a less lost for words, and Y2J has backed up every single word he has said in his story career, winning a laundry list of championships and going down in history as the first ever undisputed champion. Thank you. 
Booked. Booked. Never mind, guys. It didn't take me as long as I thought. So I've unlocked Chris Jericho 1999, and I've unlocked the Undisputed Championship. That's cool. Now let's go back to the main menu. I, I actually thought that was going to take me forever. Alright. So now we got this one. Alright, so now it's the Apocalypse versus Etching Christian on War is War. War, on War, anyways. War is War. Alright, so, this match happened on September 6, 1999 in Hartford, Connecticut. Actually, that's actually where people usually want to go to school. So the history, I'll tell you in a second. Okay, so, Weekend of Awesomeness, Edging Christian won an absolute force 
to be working with doing the attitude era. Can we do the same video? Yeah. That's too long. Who cares? So I'll read it again. Lincoln of Awesomeness, Ed and Christian were an absolute force to be reckoned with during the Attitude Era. They would go on to capture the tag team title seven times during their reign. This match set up the early quest to become number one contenders after a seven team tag tournament to determine the number one contenders for the tag team titles. Ed and Christian and the Apocalypse were the last two teams remaining. They squared off on SmackDown, but outside interference was alternate on all contests and ultimately led to this rematch on Raw. So the historical bonus objectives is I have to perform at least two double team tag team moves, which I can do, and I have to win by pinfall with Christian pinning Bradshaw. So here we go. Team tag team moves. I will sweep your opponent into the same corner as your partner and then perform a grapple move. This will automatically trigger a tag and double team move. Oh. Yeah, I can't even dig it. Oh, I think Mount Rock blew a tire from Edge. Ready, Christian? Let's do a tag team move. Ready? I usually try to do two tag team moves in a tag match anyway, so this should be easy for me. Boom! And then I come with it. Oh, I like that move. Objectives. Oh, 
Kick on ya.
now he's got that one to the apron. Alright, so now I have to make sure he reverses this. He to win. And up and down the ring. He's over. Ha, 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 ha. 
how you just persuade this pot. Yeah. Alright, so I have unlocked Christian from 1999, I've unlocked the Light Heavyweight Championship, I have unlocked Edge today, and JBL. Okay, so it looks like I'm about to go eat dinner. When I come back, I either will be making my main event with you or doing these. So, um, that's pretty much it, guys. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't. Like the videos, do all that stuff, comment, all that good stuff. Um, see him, brother, subscribe to that. Add me as a friend on Facebook, add him. Uh, follow me on Twitter, like the pages on Facebook, subscribe to All the Talking Air. That's pretty much it, guys. Peace out.